Hey, friends. Anybody out there grow up with a memory verse or, or two from your Sunday school days? One of the ones that I remember from my youth is 1 Peter 3.15. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is within you. 1 Peter 3.15. That came into my mind as I was listening to David Lose, uh, our guest uh, theologian, speaker, talk uh, Wednesday morning uh, on the subject of why our children and grandchildren don't go to church and what we might do about it. Um, one of the things that uh, really impacted me from his talk was his realization that the thing that has the biggest impact on whether or not our young people continue to live a life of faith as they grow into adulthood is not about how awesome their pastor is or their youth director, uh, not necessarily about how cool their programming is or whether there's a praise band or how contemporary their worship might feel or any of those things. The number one factor is how many conversations they have had with trusted adults about faith. These trusted adults may be pastors or youth leaders, but they may also just be people within the congregation that they're close to. They may be family members. They may be parents, grandparents. Um, any adult that they have formed a trusting relationship with that can also communicate in a way that honors their questions, doubts, listens carefully to how they're expressing their faith journey, but is also willing to share, hey, this is why this matters deeply to me. That is what makes the biggest difference. So when I think about 1 Peter 3.15, always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that is within you. I feel like it's a verse that's written for our time. It used to be nobody had to give a reason for why they were going to church on a Sunday morning. It was just simply what everyone did, and there basically weren't a whole lot of other options, right? Stores were closed. There were no youth sports that took place on Sunday morning. There just wasn't a whole lot else going on, and, and nobody had to explain what it seemed like everybody else was doing, right? Um, but now if people are going to take the time to go to church and make the decision to go to church on a Sunday morning, they need to have a reason to do it. If they don't have a reason to do it, uh, then they probably won't. Uh, and we can't just assume uh, that the reasons that we have held dear have been passed on to the next generation unless we've been intentional in doing so. So if you have loved ones um, from your family that are, are no longer attending church and you've been wondering why, the best way to find out might be simply to have a conversation with them. I know these are hard conversations to have. Sometimes they can make us nervous. We're worried about how it might impact the relationship. But if you lean in with a desire to truly understand and not to judge, if you are asking for help in understanding the perspective that your loved one's loved one holds, if you come at it from the desire to learn and grow as a person of faith and maybe make your faith your own faith community more welcoming, I'm guessing people will be happy to have that conversation with you. And they might even be a little bit more open to know why it is that participation in the life of the church remains important in your life. We are uh, blessed with a beautiful message to share, um, a story that can't be replicated in any other area of culture. And so uh, what a tremendous opportunity we have uh, to share that with others. So why don't you pray with me this week that all of us will have the grace, the wisdom, and the courage to give a reason for the hope that is within us uh, to someone who just might be looking for a reason uh, to get connected to a community of faith. God bless you, my friends. Take care. Have a wonderful rest of your week.